I'm going to introduce how to solve stoichiometry problems. And stoichiometry is really just a fancy term for the process that you're going to go through when converting from one substance into a completely different substance. So whenever I have a chemical reaction, and a chemical reaction is shown above, and I'm circling right now, um, a chemical reaction relates the mole ratios of each substance. So if I look above, for every two moles of C4H10, I would need 13 moles of O2 to react, and it would produce 8 moles of carbon dioxide and 10 moles of H2O. These numbers represent either mole ratios or they represent molecule ratios. So I could say that for every two molecules of C4H10, 13 molecules of O2 would react. I'd get eight molecules of carbon dioxide and 10 molecules of H2O. On a larger scale, these represent mole ratios. So to use these coefficients, I have to either be in molecules or more likely in the problem, I have to be in moles. I will use these coefficients any time I want to go from one substance into a completely different substance. So let's start looking at the problem. If I look in part A, it gives me 0 0.600 moles of oxygen. So I'm going to start off by writing 0 .0, 0 0.600 MOL for mole, and I'm going to be very specific about what I have. I have oxygen. So I'm going to take a moment. I'm going to find oxygen in my reaction. There it is. I'm going to write it as it appears, O2. Okay, let me read the problem now. They don't want um, information about oxygen. I eventually want to get into moles of water. So notice I'm starting with one completely different substance, O2, and I'm changing it into a different substance, water. Whenever I need to relate one substance to another, I'm going to use a chemical reaction, and I'm going to use those coefficients as conversion factors, which we call stoichiometry. So let's find water in my reaction. There it is, 10H2O. So I'm going to make a conversion factor. I want moles of O2 in the bottom so that it cancels out with the moles of O2 that I'm starting with. And I want moles of H2O in the top so that that's what I'm left with. I can get the numbers that go into my conversion factor from the coefficients. So O2 has a 13 in front, so I'm going to put 13 next to O2. H2O has a 10 in front, so I'm going to put a 10 next to the H2O. And I'm going to, in my calculator, do 0 0.6 times 10 divided by 13, and I get 0 0.462 moles of H2O. So I've successfully changed from one substance, O2, into a different substance, H2O. To use those coefficients as conversion factors, as I had said at the beginning, I need to either be in molecules or moles. So when in doubt, I always say mole it out. If you don't have moles to start with, you're going to need a conversion factor to turn it into moles first to use those coefficients. Let's try part B. They ask how many grams of carbon dioxide, so that's eventually what I want, grams of carbon dioxide, and they give me 8.25 moles of butane. So let's go to the reaction and let's start over. I'm just going to locate butane. Okay, butane is C4H10. Okay, let's start with what I'm given in the problem statement. 8.25 mol of butane, C4H10. And I want to eventually be in carbon dioxide. Let's locate that in my reaction. There it is. So I can use these ratios, a 2 to 8 ratio, of C4H10 to CO2 as long as I'm in moles. Let's see, am I starting with moles? Yes, perfect. They give me 8.25 moles. So I can immediately go into moles of C4H10 in the bottom. I want it in the bottom so that it cancels out. I want my moles of CO2 on the top because that's my desired 
uh, substance, and I can get the conversion factor from my coefficient. So there's a 2 in front of butane, so that's going to go with the butane. There's an 8 in front of CO2, so that's going to go with the CO2. And again, I just need to be in moles to use these. Moles of C4H10 cancel out. When you're doing this, it's very important to be specific about your unit. Don't just say moles. Moles of what? And that's going to help guide your stoichiometry process. Now I have moles of CO2, but notice in the problem statement they asked me for grams of carbon dioxide. So I have one more step, okay? I need another conversion factor. I have moles of CO2 on top, so I want moles of CO2 on the bottom so it cancels out, and I want grams of CO2 because that is the desired unit that I want in this particular problem. And I can use the molar mass now of CO2 as a conversion factor. For every one mole of CO2, there's 44 grams of CO2 because there's one C that weighs 12 and two O's that each weigh 16 added together is 44. Now do not multiply by the coefficient here. I've already done that when I've done the stoichiometry part. I don't want to end up doing that twice. So whenever I'm using the molar mass, as a conversion factor. I'm only doing it for one CO2 molecule. And that makes sense when I'm looking at the conversion factor. I have a one mole of CO2 on the bottom, so one mole would weigh 44 grams. And in my calculator, I would do this out, and I would end up getting one, four, five, um, and I'm just gonna round to three significant figures, so about 1450 grams of CO2. Let's try the last one. In this last one, let me just erase a little bit so we can kind of see what's going on. This last one, it gives me 6.25 grams of O2. Okay, so I'm going to write 6.25 grams of oxygen. Remember, when oxygen is by itself, it's diatomic. I'm going to write it as O2, and it's written as O2 in my reaction to remind me. And I want to eventually relate it to CO2. There it is in my reaction. Now, what do I have to be in to use these coefficients? I have to be in the unit of moles, and that's why I always say, when in doubt, mole it out. So I've got to mole out my initial amounts. I want grams of O2 in the bottom so it cancels out, moles of O2 on top to mole it out before we use those coefficients. There's two O's that each weigh 16, so there's 32 grams and one mole of O2. Grams cancel out, now I'm in moles of O2. Now I want a conversion factor to change from one substance to another. Whenever I'm changing from one substance into a completely different substance, I use the reaction coefficients in what is called stoichiometry. I want moles of O2 on the bottom so that it cancels out. I want moles of CO2 on top because I want to talk about CO2. I want grams of CO2 eventually. And I get my conversion factors from the coefficient. The 13 goes with the O2, the 8 goes with the CO2. And again, to use these coefficients, they have to either be in molecules or moles. Most likely, you'll be in moles. Okay, so now I have moles of CO2, but the problem asked me for grams of carbon dioxide. So I have one more conversion factor. I've got to turn moles of carbon dioxide into grams of carbon dioxide, and I can use the molar mass to do this. I'm only doing the mass of one mole, so do not multiply through by the coefficient. You've already done that in the stoichiometry part, which was this second conversion factor here. So notice the stoichiometry is always at the heart of changing from one substance to another. I might just have to mole it out first with one conversion factor, and I might have to mass it out or gram it back out um, with, a second, with a third conversion factor, but stoichiometry is at the heart of these particular problems. And for this one, when I do it in my calculator, I end up getting 5.29 grams of CO2. So these are stoichiometry problems. Whenever I'm converting from one substance into a different substance, um, I can use a chemical reaction and I can use the coefficients as conversion factors as long as I am in moles to do so.